what up, what up? Here we are with another episode of the Who's Where podcast. I'm your host, Chase Minifield. We live in D.C. What's good, Max? What's going on, guys? Back here trying the new studio out, so hopefully y'all enjoy this one. Yeah, man. We got a special guest today, man. One of my young bros right here. Uh, Demetrius, he goes by Demetrius, man, but I call him Trey. Demetrius Trey Nicholson, class of 2015. What's up, Trey? What's going on? It's good to be with you guys, man, again. Definitely, bro. So, um, Trey, man, Trey's one of my young boys. You know what I'm saying? Highly Trey, touted. Yeah, yeah, Highly yeah. Recruited. Number one young recruit boys, coming man. in for London, yeah, I think. He's, he's, he's number one recruit coming in for London, man. He, he was like, for your head, Chase. I remember. <laughs> nah, he won't come with my head. <laughs> I know there's a guy by the name of 2 3, Don, Don Joe. <laughs> Uh, that's who head he was coming for. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? I remember okay. that. I remember that summer when me and Dom Joe was working. I was like, "You can't let him take your spot, bro. Hey. You can't let him take your spot." <laughs> hey, Dom Joe's like, "Yeah, he'll take my spot first day of practice." He's running with the twos. Dom with the twos. With the twos. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, no, that's just funny stuff right there. But oh, um, man. Trey, man, what's up, man? What you in up to, man? What are you doing now, man? So I recently uh, moved back to UVA, moved back to Charlottesville. Mm-hmm. Um, after bouncing around a little bit, having different jobs in different cities, working in the school systems. Uh, so I've been back in UVA and Charlottesville for three years now. Just got a job working through UVA at the Equity Center. Um, literally, like, freshly new, mm-hmm. newly hired oh, for, God. like, three weeks ago. Um, but before that, I was working as a school counselor at St. Anne's Belfield out there. Um, and just trying to still find my way, um, my career path. Yeah. And I'm, I'm slowly finding that niche and what I love to do. So, you know, just, just trying to find that path and keep going that way. So what so, is the Equity Center? Yeah, good, good question. <laughs> so, and I'm still learning a lot about what it is too, just being newly hired. But um, the Equity Center essentially, um, it's a it's an office and a, a branch at UVA that's basically working to readdress racial inequities in the city. Mm. And they're trying to do a lot of research and actually implement practices to bridge gaps, opportunity gaps between university and the city. They work with uh, they, the Star Hill Pathways program, which I work with directly, and we work directly with students in the. Um, Charlottesville City Schools and also Albemarle County, um, mostly coming from uh, the minority students coming from low income areas. Um, and then the Equity Center on a bigger scale, they do a whole lot more. They do a lot of programming, just basically trying to utilize and bridge the gap between the university and the resources they have and the, the surrounding communities and basically partner a lot. So it's a lot of community partnerships going on. Yeah. Um, UVA is investing a lot of money into it right now. There's also donors investing money into the Equity Center right now. So it's, it's basically a push to just redress racial in, inequities in the, in the city of Charlottesville and in the surrounding communities. So, so <clears throat> running it all the way back, man, yeah. you from 757? Yeah. Uh, Bayside High School? Yes, sir. And uh, you're a highly touted recruit coming out of the University of Virginia. I remember uh, I'm over there. I'm the... I'm just I'm a I'm a UVA All American. My going into my senior year, yeah. and I'm in off season deciding if I want to come back to school or not. <laughs> and um, Coach West comes to me and like, man, I got a guy, I got a guy. He gonna come in and he gonna play opposite of you. And uh, I was like, all right, let me see what he's talking about real quick. All right, go check him out. You know what I'm saying? See him in the sevens and seven on seven, one on ones, and things of that nature. So talk about man, what what made you choose to come to UVA? We're not used to having no. Uh, no big time recruits come out there. Hey, he, he <laughs> yeah. was the first one to bring back number one. I think they brought back the one jersey for him. They brought back the number one? Hey, I ain't never seen it since. <laughs> I ain't never seen it either. <laughs> I ain't seen it before then or after. No, nah, man. Uh, definitely, um, there was a lot of factors that went into me choosing UVA. You know, I was, before coming there, I was, it wasn't never my goal to be like a top recruit. I was just trying to get a scholarship, man. Um, just try to go play ball. Yeah. But um, over the course of the, my my. Between my junior and senior year, I would actually say all the way back to my freshman year, I just started camp hopping mm. um, all up and down the East Coast, just going to different camps, just trying to see, get exposure, see what's going on, see if I can get any type of traction. Mm. Um, and then uh, I was fortunate enough to just get a, get a lot of scholarships, most of the ACC schools, um, and then a couple of the other schools outside of there, you know, Michigan, Stanford. And I only took one official visit. Actually, I took two. One was UVA and the other one was Stanford. Mm. So when I went out to Stanford... Um, I was talking to uh, Vic Fangio, I think. He, he's with the, I don't know who he's with now, but I think it's the Broncos maybe, D coordinator somewhere. Um, but he was recruiting me out there, and I remember asking him spe- specifically, like, do y'all pay for our parents to come out here to the games? And get out here? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> like, hey, hold on, way West Coast. This was before NIL and all that stuff. But I'm like, do y'all pay for families to fly out here to games? 
It's way West Coast. So I'm, he yeah. was like, nah, y'all get free tickets, but we don't pay for you know transportation. So I, I think at that moment, I was like, nah. Yeah, they couldn't yeah. come out there. Yeah, I'm like, nah. So big part of me going to UVA, though, was one, um, being close to family. You know, um, they can drive two and a half hours. Yeah. Come see me play when we had home games and other games, like North Carolina, whatever. Yeah. Pittsburgh. Um, and then another part of it was um, I, I had a lot of respect for Coach London when he was recruiting me and Coach West as well. Um, and I didn't know where I wanted to go, but, you know, I felt like, I wanted to play wherever I went. Um, mm -hmm. And now that I'm older, looking back, having a little more wisdom, I'm like, what's the rush, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But at the time, I was like, I feel like I can play. I want to go play. Mm -hmm. um, I was humble enough to know that I also had a lot to learn. It was going to be a different level. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I was looking at a lot of schools, and when I was going around to my visits, I was just seeing, like, how many corners were in each room, how many, you know, what the DB rooms were looking like, what would be my chances of playing. Um, and then really though, I think this is what really got me. The, my official visit, I came. You guys were playing Miami. And that was that game. Y'all, y'all were going crazy out there. <laughs> yeah, I got a two day was, game. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, knocking the quarterbacks out. Yeah, yeah Chase had like a couple picks. Yeah. I think, uh, I think Rob, maybe somebody else had a pick too. I don't know. Y'all was going crazy. So and, it was Corey. I think Corey had another one. Yeah, I think Simo yeah, had Cimo, a pick. Yeah. Shout out to Spark. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, and I was sitting there though because I didn't know much about UVA football, but. I, I knew about the U, yeah, so yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh, the U out here, but y'all work them, and yeah, I'm like, you know, this, work. yeah, I'm like, UVA actually pretty decent, like, they got opportunity to play and ball and can win, and I wanted to kind of play for the home team, so, um, you know, I put all that together, and that's kind of what landed me at UVA. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, I actually had a chance to go to Stanford, too. I wish I was, I mean... Am I left to that? I, 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 I should have probably went to Stanford, you know, I hey. chose, I chose, shout out to my guy, Peter Lilick. Yeah. But there, it was either Andrew Luck or it was Peter Lyle. <laughs> hey, Pete, Pete, you know what I'm saying? I, I used to go to uh, camps with Pete all the time because we were like 30 minutes away from each other. So yeah. I knew his dad real well. And so I was talking to Pete, and he's one of the reasons we was like, hey, yeah, let's just go. Let's run it up. Yeah. And now I remember your Courtney signed too. I was like, hey, yeah, it's this, time. this freshman class a little different. It's time. And they told me about a guy named Chase coming up here. First thing I seen was he hit the windmill dunk off the one step. I was oh, yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was like, all right, it's about to. We was doing our thing. But, um, Andrew Luck was probably the move, uh, for sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, definitely from both. So 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 Trey, um, you come to UVA. Um, did they did, were you was it football only, or was you looking to get into the like? Did, were you excited about the education? Yeah, no, nah, that was another part. I didn't even mention that, but um, you know, always you always hear about you know UVA get your UVA degree, get your UVA degree, highly mm -hmm. highly academic school, highly selective school. So that was another part that played into it. I think that was another thing my mom kind of pushed to a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so also something I, th I thought would be important because I knew I wasn't going to be playing forever. Yeah. Um, so I, I kept that in mind, too. So that was a big part. And I, I was like, this is kind of the best of both worlds right yeah. now. Um, and I was like, I, it makes sense. And then I, I knew I would probably have an opportunity to play, yeah. you know, just talking to Coach London and Coach West. So, you know, I factored all that stuff in, man. And I was, I was like, let me just do it. Let's you do know? it. Yeah, let's just go make so it happen. You, you come in and you start day one. Like, yeah. you start day one, not even just of camp, but like, there's not too many freshmen, true freshmen, that come in and play their first snap as starter from a defense level standpoint. So, yeah. talk about that first season you had, the bumps and bruises. I could, I mean, I personally thought I could have done it, but I got baptized. You know what I'm saying? I think like yeah. the, uh, my first game against USC, I was oh, a yeah. redshirt freshman. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I was hurt my first year. I was yeah. a redshirt freshman. I started my first game in college against the University of Southern California, and this was all the guys. You yeah. know what I'm saying? This was the this was them dudes out there. This was, uh, yeah, yeah. They had, who was the quarterback? Uh, Sanchez. Was quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Mark Sanchez. And I was confident yeah, as I you think, could be. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like night running back. You couldn't tell me nothing, and <laughs> I was treating it just like a high school game. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not watching film like that. I'm just sleeping in the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping in the back of the room, hey. and um, you know, so I'm like, man, I'm just going to go and do what I do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like pretty simple. And then I remember that thing changed. I was like, man, this is real. <laughs> was when we was coming down the elevators at the Omni. And it was more USC fans <laughs> in the elevator mm -hmm. than you that we couldn't even get on the elevator. <laughs> Bro, I was late to meetings because because the, the elevator was full. So I was like, "What did I sign up for? This is about to be this might that might be the biggest game we played in sure. at Scott Stadium." That was most people, I think. And so, um, and they put up thick seventy on us. It hit me like right before the game. I'm looking. I'm like, "Yeah, this is about to be real." Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't no game. <laughs> this is about to be real. This ain't no you know little league or high school. You know what I'm saying? This joint about to be fully packed, and it's gonna be anybody and everybody and watching, and it's gonna be on ABC, all that good stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready. So yeah. So when I was out there, I was like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just not gonna get beat deep. Yeah. I'm not gonna get beat deep. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep everything in front of me. I'm gonna tackle it up. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and by the third quarter, coach to pull me out. <laughs> coach to pull me out, man. I'm not stopping nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, I just remember that, and I was like, you know, yeah. man, that was a tough space because I couldn't slow nothing down. Everything mm -hmm. was fast. The moment was big, and it showed. And I think the newspapers the next day was like, you know, Chase Chase Minifield gets test by fire. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. I never forgot that like title of the headlines. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I came back next week stronger. Yeah. But I did get benched. I got benched after that. Yeah. Um, so talk to us about your your experiences as coming in. Right away, yeah, uh, to play at the college level, at the highest level, for sure, man. I'm gonna be honest, I felt kind of weird going out there first, like first day starting, like with the starters, yeah. Because I I had a lot of respect for like all our teammates, and I knew yeah. I knew it was guys who was like fifth years, fourth years, who been there, who, you know, yeah. been there. <laughs> like, so in my mind, I'm like, dang, that's kind of like crazy. But yeah. at the same time, I'm like, I'm here to play too. So. Yeah. Um, you know, the first day, I remember... And um, hey, that's not even your car, though. That's the coaches. Yeah, 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 you know for sure. That's the coaches. Yeah, so, you know, I had, I had like, an eerie feeling, but I was like, I'm here to play. There's also a lot of excitement, a lot of, a lot of anxiousness yeah. going into the first practice. Um, I remember the night before the meetings and, like, just sitting in meeting rooms and all that and getting ready for camp. I'm just like, it's kind of different. It's crazy. Um, but first day, really not knowing what's going on, just running around, you know, just trying to keep yeah. up, really, you know, the, the different periods we got going on, everybody going here and there. Um, it was kind of crazy, so I felt like I was a little bit of a deer in the headlights. Um, yeah. One thing I didn't know, like, I can back paddle, I can plant, I can probably yeah, guard yeah, people. So I'm going to just keep it yeah. simple in my mind. All the other stuff is regarding the plays, you know, what, what my assignment is, what my duty is. All that stuff will come. So, you know, the first day, it was just it was just kind of wild. Um, mm -hmm. You know, again, like, I, was, I just I felt kind of weird at first, but then as the days went on, I just got to come out here and play, man. You yeah. know, just come play. And I uh, had a lot of respect for, like, all you guys, man, because yeah. honestly, like, y'all... Y'all like I learned a lot from y'all as I was going and like any any questions I always had, no matter yeah. who I asked, it was like, you know, people was willing to help me out. You know, and that's not always the case yeah. when you got a young boy coming in. I can imagine now that I'm older yeah. and like out there first and you're probably looking at and I always I felt like I was undersized like crazy too. Yeah. So I always had that thought, a little bit of insecurity, like I'm kinda short. Like I'm kinda and you, you know and you, like, and you haven't had a chance to hit the weights like that. Yeah, yeah. I was like one sixty three, you know, yeah. like Five nine, maybe. I call myself five nine, but yeah. um, but I always had those thoughts in the back of my mind. But I also told myself like you're here for a reason. Like yeah. just go play and, and figure it out. You know, Ain't no so, turning back now. Yeah, yeah it wasn't so, no turning back. Cameras on. Yeah, yeah. Everything. everything recorded. Like yeah. filmed on live. Media. That's, yeah, that's one thing I, I I would like like you said at the beginning. Like what's the rush? Because yeah. like as soon as you get out there and you start taking snaps, like you getting graded. Yeah, yeah. Not just by the team, by the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't get those reps back. No. You know what I'm saying? So when you do get those reps, you rather be prepared for the reps. And I, you know, I kind of like, I, to the level that I was preparing for the game as a fifth-year senior, I know that you wasn't, like, at that level of yeah. understanding how to slow the game down yeah. and things of that nature. Yep. And uh, so it's just like, you just got to figure it out on yeah. the fly. And, um, it, it, you know, I don't know what the coaches do for you. And if I was the coaches, you know what I'm saying, I would want to bring you on slower. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you got they got you for four years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you rather keep this guy's confidence super high exactly, than to come in there and have him going against the best kids in the country. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With just raw talent. Yep. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, um, but I just yeah, remember, too, like, space. speaking of, like, how you was preparing, like, just when uh, Coach West was like, you know, get with Chase and everything. And then... um. You know, it's even being around like guys like Roy and all them, yeah. like watching you, like because you was always like whole summer just like you'll be at the the workouts we had to be at, and then you was also like doing your other thing. Yeah. And I remember telling my mom like, "Yo, Chase workout, he bring his own camera out there, like he got his own little <laughs> tripod set up, yeah, like yeah. he was on it, you know." And I remember one night specifically, me, I think me, you, Rio, Rod, Dom, I think we was in the stadium, and I remember Kyle came over, bro, over in the stadium, like, yeah, we was doing stadiums, steps, yeah. switching the vest off, and I remember this like. July and I remember you. We was we got done. We were on the field. You was like, bro. You was like, man. I just I wonder what those Miami boys doing right now. Yeah. And then in my mind, I'm thinking like, dang, like you know, he already thinking like other people out here really getting it, you know. And we we got to be ready for that. Yeah. But I just remember like just working with y'all, man, and being like, yeah, this is different. You got to really be after it, you know, yeah. to get ready. And 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 to be honest, like working out is great, and like the time of the time we spent in working out. Yeah. But the, I think that like. For someone as that's a rook, that's a freshman, yeah, like you don't understand the amount of time that needs to be put in on the film, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On yeah. the film, being able to understand tendencies and things of that nature. And I wouldn't have done that as a freshman. I'm in freshman dorms, 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not going to be in freshman dorms nah. running the tape. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to do that. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I got a lot of respect for you going yeah, out there yeah. and showing up and competing for sure. Yeah. Um, but it's and, definitely a tough position to be put in. For sure. And you talked about, like, y'all playing USC first. Yeah. Like, we played William Mary first. And, yeah, like, yeah, no yeah. shade to William Mary at all. You know, they had D1, they were a D1 FCS school. Yeah. Um, but... It wasn't like, you know, the next week we played Indiana. Yeah, yeah. I, I just remember the difference in, like, physicality, physicality with the receivers, yeah. like, looking so at you, the scout report. You have, to have like, two, star, two first games. Yeah, everybody, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm looking at the scout report, it's like six, seven, six, 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 five. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, so, you know, I kind of, you know, kind of got not an easy entry, but, you know, eased into it a little bit until we yeah. really hit some D1 FBS schools. Yeah, that was one thing about me. My, like... USC, my first year, it was probably the toughest team we played against my entire four or five years there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe not the toughest by receivers, but just like the toughest, like overall talented team. And we got our butt kicked too. <laughs> it wasn't even close. They took us to the shed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. So, what was your what was your number? What was your favorite? Or what, what were some experiences that you remember from your season actually playing that Pleasure. you look back on and like these are lessons that I learned from being in those positions that a lot of people don't get the chance to experience. Yeah, we're talking about first year? Yeah. Uh, well, the highlights, man, obviously just like being on that stage, um, you know, having everybody see you out there and you know, everybody back home like, yo, I see you out there playing, all this stuff. You know, yeah. I kept, caught a pick our first game. Like, everything was feeling great. Oh, yeah, you did get one. Uh, I did, yeah. Yes. I remember that play like crazy, um, <laughs> like yesterday. But uh, about to run it up. <laughs> <laughs> this is before you can post everything and all that, though. This is yeah, before, that's like, that's what I'm saying. This was before Instagram and everything was going crazy like that. But um, <laughs> definitely, though, like everything, just being out there, being in that situation, having that opportunity to, to play, learning as I go. I think some of the uh, challenging moments came when when I was like giving up big plays mm. and I had to. I had to learn like this is different, and I felt like I felt a lot of pressure. Like, dang, I'm like, I just let my teammates down. Like, dang, everybody just yeah. saw me. Yeah. We on ESPN. They wouldn't give, it, they wouldn't give you much <laughs> like, help either. I mean. No, no. Hey, so. Coach, Coach Reed was saying we'll blitz. <laughs> Hey, it was ones. Yeah, it was ones out there. Just praying the blitz get yeah. there, bro. I'm like, hey, no, nah, but it was it was like times like that when I'm learning. I'm like, dang, like I'm giving up plays. I'm not used to doing that, and not used to be people being like legit faster than me, mm. and like. All the other little skills that they had, I had to learn how to like, you know, that's where you, you know, you talk about the film. That's where I had to learn to like have the little yeah, yeah. experiences. Like, right, I need to do this because he fascinating. I might need to open up and cut him off. <laughs> like, when you're going deep, like, no, don't open the gate because he's gone. Yeah, yeah. They're going to throw a bomb. But it was a lot of times like that where I'm like, like dang, do I need to be like <laughs> right now? Like, mm -hmm. giving up spin posts and I, I'm trying to chase the receiver down. It was, it was times like that where I, I was like, dang, you know, I had to, I had to have a short memory and I had, yeah. to, I had to grow that a little bit because I would be thinking about stuff. Throughout the rest of the game, yeah. and I knew it was recorded. I'm like, yeah. damn, I'm gonna have to watch this in film next day. Rips. So I think that was the hardest thing, um, especially my first year, and just not playing like I'm walking on eggshells. Yeah, I think yeah. I was doing that a lot. And when I look back and I, I look at a lot of young athletes now, I'm like, man, just go play. Like, don't yeah, worry about making mistakes. You know, like I felt like I was playing a little slower than I needed to because I was yeah. scared to make a mistake after I give Thinking up one play. It. Yeah, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. Those are the hard things, man. And um And we had a whole bunch of seniors out there. Yeah. So like, you know, you're a freshman and yeah. we're out here like, you know, saying hey, you gotta come on. I know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like bro, come on, like what you doing, right? Yeah. Like, come on. Um and I, I, I felt that too, you know, I felt mm. I knew how much that meant to all y'all, especially all the fifth years and y'all yeah. who came with growth. I think our whole secondary was seniors. Yeah, yeah. it was. Wow. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was all seniors. Um so yeah, it was just, you know, the hard times were trying to just recoup from all the times where you might give up a play or like you might yeah. make a mistake. Coach getting on you, and you gotta still go out there and repeat and go. Is there is there know? any plays that like you really see in your head, like from a standpoint, like the lights was bright? Like when do you think the lights was the brightest? And he was like, "Yo, what the heck am I, What the heck is going on out <laughs> bro?" Honestly, I will. Yeah, Miami game. Yeah, yeah. it was my birthday. Like yeah. I just turned nineteen. Like we, it's Thursday night. Yeah, yeah the ESPN that. game. Yeah, and. They had like you know like Benjamin was out there like I think Devin Streeter, Streeter was out yeah. there yeah and I just remember bro like <laughs> you know how we used to do crack and replace a couple four yeah they kept play action and bro and like he would come down and no. they're like so the rest of the game they had to run probably like five double moves that whole game on me and yeah. I was just like spinning they bro was getting like, you to work yeah I'm like. I feel bad. I can't even jump. Out, you know what I'm saying? I know. Like, I'm like, that's, I, that's tough for y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do this right. They're coming. <laughs> yeah, I remember, bro. Like they just. I was, I was playing so hesitant because I'm like, dang, if I try to jump, then like, yeah. this might be sluggo or this yeah. might be stop and go. Bro. Like, yeah. it's, it was just crazy it was out there. I remember I had like 
I had like one pass break out that game, yeah. and then like a couple of tackles. But that was you. a rough game. And it's though. the you, like just like yeah. a brand that, that you see. You yeah, know what I'm saying? like this is. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you, you put there. that brand on people, and they like, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying just because you got that on, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got this on. Don't mean you nice, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's one thing that uh, we had to kind of, you kind of had to overcome that yep. from our situations. But yeah, that was the first game that I would say like it got it got kind of crazy out there, um, and I realized like yeah, 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 you know. That was a uh, we get did the win though. Shout out to we the, did, yeah. Shout out to the squad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so yeah, man. What did you end up choosing to study at uh, UVA, and uh, what did you? When did you think? When did you figure out? You know what you wanted to kind of do academically? I I didn't really know, bro. Like I, I was a first gen college kid going into UVA. Um, I knew like I like working with people. Um, I think I learned that just in high school a little bit doing community service and everything. Um, so I'm looking at our majors and I'm like. Sociology probably is the, the most broadest one that I can probably go into that mm-hmm. will lead me to being able to do something else. I might have to study some more or go right. into grad school. But so I chose sociology, not really knowing what I was going to do next. Um, but, you know, I think over the course of uh, college, when we will go out doing do uh, community service, go to the elementary schools, I realized mm-hmm. I really like working with students and kids, man. It was like something I felt a little passionate about. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just kind of kept that tucked away a little bit, yep. um, knowing one day I will be able to be having to do something else. Um, and I, I thought that was kind of like an easy thing, not an easy thing, but like a gift, something that I really enjoyed doing that came easy for me. Um, so that's why I chose social, because I knew eventually I'd be working with people, mm-hmm. but mainly I thought with kids. Um, so I chose that um, and then ended up still going to grad school later because I had an extra year. But uh, that, that's that's kind of what chose me, what put me on that path. I didn't really know what I was going to get into, though. I had no had no clue. Yeah. And I thought we was kind of limited to like what we what could we do. Study yeah, yeah sure. that, that yeah. was another thing that kind of threw me a little bit. I was like, dang. Yeah. You, like, they they here now, tell, though, they usually like, tell people you're going to be a business major. <laughs> 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 yeah, they usually tell you you're gonna be a business yeah. major. Then co- you come in like, "Where's my business class?" Like, nah, nah, bro. Right. You head over yeah, here to sites and practice. practice. Yeah, yeah, we got practice hey, while the classes going on. These are the hours you can take class. Yeah, I'm like, these are like classes I'm that like, go on. Dang, like, yeah. we can't even. So yeah. I thought that limited some of you know maybe some decisions I might have made yeah. if it was different. But that was definitely like, um, no, social was the one I thought was maybe giving me the best opportunity. So, so when you uh, when you came in, you know, highly touted, as yeah. we always say, but. For sure. uh, Honestly, like, were you kind of like, all right, you know, I'll maybe, you know, I'll do college thing just to get to the NFL? Or were you thinking, like, all right, you know, maybe after the NFL, I'm going to do college and then figure out what I want to do long term? Or what, what was your thought process? Were you, were you like, I'm, a just de- I'm, I'm going to the league? Or were you like, I'm going to find something else after I'm done? I, I think it was like a mixture. <laughs> like, I, got you. I, got I think you. it, because I was, I was basing it off of how to, I, I had the goal of going to the league, obviously. Right. Like, yeah. And I think mainly, though, I think oh. over time, I, I don't know if it was because I've just, really died to play in the NFL or if I just like wanted the money to play in the NFL yeah, like be able yeah. to just help people back home and all that you know right. so I think as I got older like my perspective shifted a little bit but mm-hmm. um, originally it was definitely go play let's go to the league yeah. you know you good enough to make it there yep. um, like most people and then right. um, over the course of, of time it, it changed a little bit not that I didn't want to go but like yeah. my mindset of doing other things kind of picked up a little bit gotcha. um, but yeah it was it was definitely a you know First idea, go to the league. Like that's what we wanted to do. And so, so what's uh, your um? So talk about the kind of your run a little bit because I think Coach Lennon got fired while he was there, right? Or when no. I left. When well, you, yeah, same time. Same actually. time. Yeah. So did you play any any years underneath the new coach? Nah. No. Okay. No. I just so you played full, Lennon's full thing. Mm-hmm. You feel responsible for that? For what? <laughs> <laughs> for the for the coming and going? Yeah, yeah. Nah, you know what I'm right? for that? Hey, I think I see your glasses <laughs> for his extension. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, man. Nah, oh, bro. Man. You know, but okay, because you know you was the top guy, right? <laughs> hey, he's the only yeah, right he, he, he brought you in there to keep his keep his keep his uh job, his job going. Nah, you know what I, had, nah. I had at least a quarter or a third of the field, bro. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah so, but it was definitely like so much to that point though. It was definitely games though, like to that point broadly though. Like right. thinking yeah. of like coaches and stuff like that. It would be times though, like thinking of like. Coach West and stuff when like I make a mistake yeah. on the field and I'll be like, dang, like I know he told me not to do this. Yeah. So, like I'm the one messing up right yeah. now yeah. and like, dang, it's gonna look bad on him. He would tell us that too, like in the meeting room. He'd be like, look, my man. kids like Jays. Yeah, you remember my that? kids like, like Jays. Now. See those Jays? <laughs> see those Jays? I got to yeah. feed my kids like them. That's that's real though. That's a real part of college yeah. football, man. Like coaches' livelihoods are on right. the players, right. but um, but yeah, I definitely felt that sometimes like. Dang, I'm a representation of my coach right now. Like, and that was that was part of like that early those early times of like making mistakes and just yeah. feeling like, dang, I'm I'm like everybody down right now, you know. 
Um, that was kind of hard pill to swallow a little bit too. Like, I, I understand letting the, your teammates down, but them coaches they can kick it. They can kiss. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't even really listen to the coaches when I get out there. Honestly, you gonna you gonna rely on me? I'm gonna do what I want to do. That's a couple times I was supposed to be a man. I was blitzing. <laughs> you know what I'm hey, That's facts. Ew, man. so. Um, you did get an injury though, right? Yeah. Like, talk to us, like, so you started again your sophomore year. Yeah. Um, how'd that go? And then go into your junior year. Did you get an injury your junior year? Yeah, it was man. Everything was going like, I would say pretty smooth. I won't say great because I yeah. wasn't like all American every year or nothing like that. But everything was going pretty smooth. I was having a solid career. Started freshman year, like every snap. Sophomore year, every yeah, snap. You started like ninety six percent of the snaps, yeah. or something like that. I had that third year, every yeah, snap, crazy. All the way up until fifth game of the season, we were playing Ball State, and that's when my injury happened. But second year. Um, I was dropping a lot of picks, but I had a lot of pass breakups. Yeah. Um, and I was like honorable. Because it's like you gotta bring them in. I know, right? Yeah. I remember you saying that one day too at practice, right? You're like, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta go next level. Like you can't just have pass breakups. That was like first year. But I remember um first year, you know, it was what it was. Second year I felt more confident coming in. I was a little bigger, had a year under my belt, everything was going pretty decent. We didn't go to no bowl game that year or nothing, but yeah. then we went like four and six again. Um mm. or something like that. But then uh third year, uh we got you know, Coach Reed, Coach Reed got fired second year actually. Okay. Um, Coach London stayed there. Um, so we had a new D coordinator. Uh, everything was going, everything was shake, shaking up a little bit, but everything was going pretty decently. And then we was playing Ball State, and I got my foot rolled up on going in for a tackle. Yeah. Um, and I thought I just rolled my ankle, so I got up and uh, the dude broke too. Like everybody, we all like did this, and somehow yeah. the dude still broke and scored. It made everything worse. By the oh, way, but. Yeah, Y'all dog piled up. Nah, I think he just, he just hit the whole run dip. So <laughs> he scored, bro. So I got up and I felt my foot, and I didn't know what it was, but I'm like, I got my ankles tail. I know I didn't break my ankle. Yeah. So then the next uh, series, we go out, offense go out, throw a pick, like mm -hmm. second play. Mm -hmm. And I'm still trying to figure out what's wrong with my foot. So we go back, they're like, sudden change, sudden change. So we run back out there. I'm like, all right. <laughs> And then they ran like a zone read this way, and my receiver kind of just ran like an out route, like faking. Yeah. But I backpedaled and planted, and I realized I couldn't put no pressure on it. Ooh. So I'm like, mm. and I remember telling our safety at the time, Brandon, I'm like, bro, something wrong with my foot. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. He like, bro, just go down. So I'm like, all right. So and I, I wanted to just run off the field, but it was, you know, just to get her all the yeah. substitutions. But yeah. did that, bro. They they took my, uh, they tried to tape my toe up, but when they took it off, all bruised, red, I mean, purple, like, you know, red from swelling. So, the next day, like the whole process after that, long story short, was just inconvenience of like rehab and then like the rehab won't go on great. And then I ended up having surgery and that surgery, the rehab for that or the kind of return time for that led into my fourth year. Yeah. So it was a season ending injury. Basically, yeah. So, so this, this, is what, this is what they say on Virginia Sports. They said until the season ending injury in 2013, of 2,055 defensive Virginia snaps, uh, Trey had played in 1,981. Yeah. Which is 96.39% of UVA's defensive plays since he got there, mm. which is crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He ain't never coming off the field <laughs> from first and second year. Yeah. Uh, and then third year, he has an injury. So now you got to deal with some adversity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which is, you know, a whole different ball game, especially dealing with your body. Yeah. And you've been relying on your speed, your agility, mm -hmm. and all those different type of things like that. So talk to us about your... Um, like you said, going into your fourth year, dealing with like um, rehabbing and getting yourself back to 100 yeah. percent, while everybody else is out there training at 100 percent. Yeah, that you was a dark time, saying? bro. I'm gonna be honest, that was a tough time. Like, was you out there getting dogged in the drills? Was drills when you get when you came back to like when you was able to like run with the team and stuff like that? Was they out there? Yeah, I ain't out sprinting bro. you, out jumping you. I ain't feel right, bro. Like, like said, corner ain't a spot. That yeah. you can I ain't wanna. 80%. I would have. I would have rather like broke my arm yeah, than like yeah, my feet. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like it's tough. Yeah. So. Um, I came back actually spring, spring ball of fourth year. I tried to come back. Um, came back going through uh, winter workouts, getting ready, you know, mat drills, all that. And my foot still like it, it don't feel the same, but it also still kind of like hurting my cleat, yeah, like right yeah. when my injury happened. So I'm like, man, like what is going on, bro? Like this is crazy. I'm trying yeah. to get back out here. You know, we got a new D coordinator, and I was hurt most oh, of yeah, the that's time. Even worse. Yeah, like his time there. Coach West wasn't there no more. Was Coach West there? Yeah. But okay. our D coordinator was different. So, okay. yeah. uh, but I was he he yeah. saw me only for like four games, and then the rest of the time, yeah. mostly I was hurt. So I was yeah. out. I'm like, you know, like all right. So Coach, West, next. Coach West trying to defend you, and he's over here like, man, I ain't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he could, it wasn't even. Yeah, he did exactly. It was like yeah. I I can't go off that, you know. Um, so that was another. That was a whole another layer of it, you know. Yeah. That that was 
like if it was somebody that knew me from first, second year, knew whatever, mm. um, you know, but at the end of the day, you next man up type thing. So, you know, they, they moving on. I'm trying to get back. So I went through spring, didn't have really a great spring coming back. Um, so I, and then I had started going back to the trainer, like, yo, my foot is still like, I can't even really, I'm limping coming out at the end of practices. Yeah. Um, so we started like, um, just trying to get that back right again. But after uh, uh, fourth year, after I had my surgery and all that, all that, uh, the, what is it? The prognosis went into the season and it was like the fifth game. And I remember them saying like, listen, you can try to play and see how it feels. And if it, if, if you can't make it through, or if it's too crazy after the game, you can you apply for a medical red shirt and like mm-hmm. try to let it fully like just mm-hmm. get all the way back. Um, and, or they was like, if you play after this game, cause this was before like the whole different red shirt rules and stuff. They're yeah. like, if you play after this game, you done. Like you graduating this year and you yeah. out of here. Like yeah. <laughs> your career is done. Yeah. Mind you, I didn't miss like the whole last season and a half. So I'm yeah. like, dang. So I tried to play in the Kent State game. Um, I actually caught a pick that game. Yeah. Like it wasn't like a crazy pick, but they tried to throw a jump ball and we like yeah. tussled for the ball and I ended up, I ended up with it. But um, like the next day, I just couldn't really walk on it. And I'm yeah. like, it's crazy. That's so tough. got a medical red shirt. Missed fourth year. So I missed basically third year from after the fifth game, fourth year. And that's what made me come back for a fifth year. Mm-hmm. And by that time, that's a lot of time missed, bro. You, oh, yeah. you know how it is when you're not, you're not present, bro. Yeah. Just, stuff move forward. So I'm like trying to get myself, get my mind right. Like, yo, I'm going to have to really like grind, try to get myself back to it. Just try to get myself to show up every day and yeah. be my best self, bro. It was, it was a dark time, though, for sure. A lot yeah. of adversity there. Definitely. Um, I know when I, when I, I came to UVA and uh, I was coming off an of ACL. I got I tore my ACL in uh, high school playing basketball. Yeah. And when I showed up to UVA, I wasn't practicing because you know one thing about me: if I'm hurt, I'm not coming back to 100. <laughs> percent Yeah. Like you ain't gonna see me playing with like no pain and nothing like That's that. Facts, like, yeah. I, my dad taught me that early. He was like, as soon as you go out there, if you out there and they and they and they putting the tape on, they think you're 100. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be responsible for whatever you put on tape. Nah, that's real. Um, but at the end of the day, I remember when I first got out there for the first practice in my Don Joy. Yeah, it's a mm-hmm. corner. Uh, State and Joe, who was a wide receiver then, he was a walk-on wide receiver, dropped yeah. me. Like, oh, wow. I hit the deck, like, just like I showed you that Dom <laughs> yeah. Joe tape. Hit the deck. And I was like, nah, man, I got to I gotta figure it out. Yeah. Um, because you just can't keep on being out here. And then this is the only opinion that people have of you. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? If you stay on the sideline, they still looking at your high school tapes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you get, once you get out there, now you're putting out new tapes. So yeah, I felt, though, I, I had missed so much time, man. I'm like, I can't miss no more time. Like. I was like, I gotta get, I gotta get back out there. You wasn't, like, you wasn't even thinking about like, like college don't even really like when you really look at the scheme of it. Like yeah. college don't even really mean nothing. Like I almost would rather get a chance at the NFL at a hundred percent, right? Yeah. Than done broke myself yeah. down. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. College, you know what I'm saying? That's, 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 that's hard. Years in the body. Yeah, like, yeah, it is. So, I ain't had that. I ain't had that wisdom though. You know, I was just like trying to get some. I'm like, if I ain't out there, play against Kent State. Hey, it just so happened that was the game. That was the last hey, game man. I could play in, bro. But yeah. hey, you know, gave it a shot. So, bro. But, so in that space, when you yeah. were you starting to think more so about school at all? Yeah, bro. Honestly, yeah. I, yeah. that was that was one of the times where I'm like, nah, this real. Like, right. This probably not. It's not looking too promising right this now. Might not work I missed mad time, and they gave me that fifth year to come back. And you know, most of us like go to summer school, so we finished a little early. Yeah. So I had mad time, and then um, I got into the the Curry School, the higher program they got there, and that really exposed me just to like a lot of the opportunities and yeah. stuff. I ain't even, you know, wasn't even really thinking about it at the time. So, I, I my mind shut, my mindset shifted a little bit. Um, I was still thinking like I still got a shot though. Like you know, yeah. in the back of my mind, like I could still, I'll get back healthy. I could still probably you know go try out, have a free agent little thing yeah. or whatever. Um, but I was definitely starting to think about like. I won't feeling. I don't, I was feeling off after my surgery. I'm like, nah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was definitely thinking about what I was gonna be doing next. Cause I thought if I, even if I went to the league, I don't think I would have played long. I just yeah. don't think I had the, yeah. the body frame and like the. Right. I just don't <laughs> think I could have stayed out. Especially now that I watch it now. Yeah. I'm like, nah. I wouldn't have been out there long, bro. Like, no way. I probably would have made a little money and then dipped out. Nah, but yeah. um, you know, everything kind of fell how it fell. Mm-hmm. Um, and I ended up in grad school for that yeah. fifth year. Was that a uh, transition hard when you kind of figuring out like? All right, I might have to figure out life after football, or bro, was it like yes. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I did, even when I graduated. Yeah. So I graduated. I went and worked in Baltimore at a public school out there, and I was still in my mind like trying to play. So the Ottawa Red Blacks had like tryouts, and I went out there. I went out to Atlanta to like 
it was just this huge. It was like, bro, so many people there. I'm like, it's no way unless you <laughs> running like four one out here and you yeah. just standing yeah. out like yeah. they gonna see you. But I went out there. Um, really, nothing came out of that. But it, it took me a little minute to like just be like come to grips with it. But I felt kind of like relieved that when I did, it was hard. But I was like, let me just go ahead yeah. and like yeah. figure out what I'm gonna do. Yeah. So you're a double major, right? You got to graduate. You got yeah. the master's in at UVA. Yep. And um. Yeah, I'm, I mean, about to, I'm about to have another one in counseling. About to have another one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Three degrees. There you go. You might, yeah. you might be the first one for that one. Yeah. Um, so did you did you go do pro day? Did you do pro day? I did, you, bro. It was did, not great. Was it bro. good? I was no. You look bad. <laughs> pro day wasn't great. Put that bad tape out there. I didn't feel great, bro. Like oh, I man. think at that point, I don't think I was properly like I don't think I was physically ready. Yeah. Either like my training up to that point wasn't like superb yeah. and i think if i can go back and do anything different that would have been like one thing i would have did like yeah. i was because i also really didn't if i could go back i would probably just train at uva like yeah. i was going back home and like traveling training yeah. so i didn't feel great bro it was just it was just not it yeah. so um and then i think that was another thing that was like you know what like that was like kind of like the icing on the cake a little bit yeah. like i ain't really like I wasn't even really fully mentally into it either. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the most exciting days of a lot of people's lives, you know, that yeah, we want to yeah. play, you know, a lot of seeing the scouts out there, it's like, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. I was kind of excited, but I didn't feel as good as I wanted to feel in that moment, physically, even mentally, you know, and I, and I, I take accountability for a lot of that because if I can go back, I would train differently, you know, and had a different type of schedule. Like, I was still in grad classes mm -hmm. at UVA, so I would leave on Thursdays, go home, train through the week, mm -hmm. uh, weekend, come back, lift while I'm at school. Yeah. So... It was not like a great regimen I was on, yeah. and you need that when you go out there, bro. That's oh, the yeah. that's the one day you live in front of you in right. front of everybody. So, yeah. Okay, so um, you, you didn't get no calls from the league teams. Did you get anybody? I got a letter out? from the Colts, bro. I still got it to this day. Yeah. That was like we want to invite you to your rookie mini camp. Yeah, but after like the draft and all that, I ain't never really hear back from them at oh, all. Mm -hmm. um, I actually went to a I went to a senior bowl called the Tropic Bowl. Mm -hmm. um, I think they still got it every every year. Uh, different schools, lot, people from all over, a lot of yeah. FCS schools, so FBS schools out there, yeah. um, went out there, played in that game. So I was still trying to do little things yeah. that would give me some exposure and give me opportunities. But um, I don't, honestly don't think I was, I was, I feel like I was a different player at yeah. that point, yeah, bro. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't as good yeah, yeah. As, I, as I felt I could have been prior for to sure. the injury, not blaming the injury for everything, but like, I mean, that stuff I happens, think it just man. People, me back. people don't understand injuries. Yeah. Is, it not only does it change your athletic career, it changes your mental yeah. thought process, it you know does, what I'm saying, bro. about what you're trying to do. And if you get hurt, um, especially in the middle of your like college career, mm -hmm. like the, the competition starts changing. Now, if you get hurt in the NFL, they still pay you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you get back, they're going to they, – they we, sure, yeah. yeah, we didn't say <laughs> we, we didn't make sure the, money back yeah, now. We didn't make sure the $6 million is – you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you can still play, we got to play them. Yeah. It's return on investment. But in college, everybody's competing. So For sure. Now somebody's like, I, I got to eat. Yeah. So yeah, it yeah. goes from there. But um, so after that, you got two degrees. You're graduating. You just ran 5'8". No. <laughs> you ran a 5'8", bro. Don't do him like that. Hey. Don't do him like that on camera, bro. That's crazy. You hey. didn't give us a number. Hey. He said it was bad. Hey, bro. I only, bro honestly, uh, I don't even know what I ran that day, bro. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even yeah. ask. Like, yeah. it was, I, I just you know. You didn't want to know. Yeah, it was like, it was like one of those moments. That I'm like, bro, I'm not even like. <laughs> I don't even want to hear that And I don't think it was like slow, but it wasn't like what I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I would have like, yeah, I'm ready. I just feel like he was moving out there. Nah, bro. Like, you know, in your mind, you like. I'm out, but like, you don't really. When you're done, you like, oh no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like one of those, but it won't. Yeah. It won't great, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember <laughs> Dog Joe, my guy. He's not here, but I remember that he was running for the foot. Oh, Dad, Dad. <laughs> he was running for the. Uh, he was running for the freaking. Um, like the like you know the little like regional uh, combines they be having. Yeah. Oh yeah. He ran one. He got his. He looked up his time online. It said like five. Seven. <laughs> and he went back. He, he turned the car around. <laughs> he, he was like, "This ain't me." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's no way. That can't they, be me. They had mixed the numbers up yeah. like to where like they thought that like it was a lineman that was running behind oh, them, and they gave the lineman bro, his time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he whipped, he whipped that truck around quick. Bro. <laughs> Hey, He's a kid. Nah, that can't man. be my time. That's very funny. <laughs> Uncle Joe. Hey, them forty times man, ain't nothing to play about. So nah, uh, back then. So now you're, you're you're figuring out what's next. You got yeah. two degrees, um, and you're like, what do I do now? Like, you know, what I'm saying you didn't necessarily go to school to get a job. No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. now, what, what 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 kind of options are you looking at? So we, bro, that um, the higher ed program is the program. Like I got into at UVA, finished that. So I got a master's in higher ed. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do something in education. 
I went work in Baltimore at a public school, and I was working as a success coach at like a low income public school, and it was great um, just being in there with the kids. Man, they was they was really rough. They was coming from a rough environment, mm -hmm. um, but I loved it though. And I was like, all right, I can see myself kind of doing this. And then from Baltimore, I left, moved back to Virginia Beach, and then um, got a job as a student support specialist working in the counseling office. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. So I'm just kind of like navigating. I was working with kids coming from alternative education programs, like they called them like the bad kids, but they was just kids who, you know, had different troubles, different traumas, and was learning elsewhere, and then they was coming back to their regular schools. Um, and then from there, um, moved to Lynchburg, and I jumped into the private school world a little bit because my wife got a job out there. And then um, I was coaching football. That was like my first getting back to football type thing. Um, I was coaching at a private school there. Uh, then I was teaching U.S. history, <laughs> working as a learner. They, they give you mad roles at a private school because you don't have to have a license to do that stuff. Uh, yeah. um, but you just got to have like experience. Mm. So they would prefer a license, though. But then um, from there, I moved back to Charlottesville. And then I, I got into a counseling program. So mm. uh, I'm about to finish in December to have a master's in counseling. Dope. And um, I'll be a licensed school counselor. And then after I get all my hours following that, I'm going to be a licensed professional counselor. So I'm trying to get my LPC and be mm -hmm. a therapist. So oh, nice. um, is, that your passion? is that where your passion sits? I think that's where everything led me to. Yeah. yeah just um just wanted to be, you know, for one, working in the schools, being a school counselor, and then also just being a therapist in the community because I learned how important that is, you know, yeah, with time. Sure. So um that's kind of where my path leads me right now. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. And then I, I just got this job through the Equity Center at UVA um, and the Star Hill Pathways program, which is basically giving me another opportunity to grow professionally, learn about all the community partners and ways to build programming um, for people and for students, for us in particular. So I think everything kind of aligning right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I still have days where I think about football and I'm like, mm -hmm. dang, you know, especially hard days. I'm like, man, I should be playing right now. I should be about to go to practice. Yeah. Around this time, like camp and stuff, get a little nostalgia. You know, yeah. it's like, dang, I'm ready to go. I should be out there practicing or whatever. But I'm also at an age now where I'm like, I'm accepting all that. Like, yeah, it's just, it is it. Yeah, I'm 30, bro. I I I've been accepting it for a while like, now. But I'm like, like, thank God I don't got to go to camp. I wouldn't make it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, for real. But yeah, just trying to, I, I think I found my niche a little bit now yeah. doing what I'm doing. So, and always being able to look back on that experience and everything I learned from, everything I learned from it and take it with me. Yeah. So before we close it up, um, so looking back, what would you, if you had to like put like a sentence or a word on your journey, like from, high, from, from being highly recruited through UVA to mm -hmm. where you are now? What do you? What would you describe your experience as? Shoot, bro. Um, I would. I mean, it's gonna sound really generic, and cliche, but I would just say it's like a journey, bro. It's yeah. just like because you never know what's gonna come on the journey, and I think, mm -hmm. you know, it has its highs and lows when you when you're on different journeys and peaks and valleys and all that. So um, that's just what it's been, and yeah. um, you know, you just just keep moving, just keep going, bro. Yeah. No, that makes sense, bro. So Trey, man, we appreciate you jumping on. Definitely. Um, tell everybody how they can reach you. Yeah, uh, so um, my Instagram is intercepted by Nicholson, um, and I'm up there. I'm not super socially active on there, but I, I post every now and then, but y'all can follow me up there. Um, yeah, that's the only social media I'm really on right that's now, it. bro. I, that's try, I try to keep a low profile a little nah, bit. Nah, so. I feel you. Yeah. Um, so we always finish our podcast with the rapid fire questions. For sure. All right, I think you might have heard Trudy do his. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So you might have been practicing your, your answers. <laughs> um, but here we go right here. First thing that comes to mind, hotels or Airbnbs? Hotels. L listen to books or read books? Listen. Go to the movies or watch Netflix? Movies. Go to uh, movies. Cable or streaming? Streaming these days. IG stories or IG posts? Posts. Watch the news or read the news? <sighs> Probably read. Would you rather start a podcast or write a book? Write a book, for sure. Apple or Android? Apple. <laughs> Detroit pizza or New York pizza? New York. I never had Detroit pizza. All right. Yeah. And if you were moving, would you hire a moving company or would you get your friends to help you move? Probably friends. I'm being a business. All right, man. We're hiring <laughs> That's what we're about to be a business. <laughs> Unless it's back, though. <laughs>